Give me damn lights coming in the ring. Hello, welcome to What the Flop. I'm Lady Fluffy a Panda. I'm Tam Loves Tea. And it's Christmas! Yay! Yay! I have the most dwanky little hat. Look at that. It's just. Mm, mm. Christmas time. Annoyingly festive. You're aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> Aggressively festive. So, uh, real quick, we're going to go through our stories. I have yeah. one story, Tam has a story, and then we have news. Boom, boom, boom. And then we're going to play a cute little thing. All right. So let's jump into it. Let's just go right Our into first it. story is the How nut. cute you look in that hat. Oh, oh Carl, don't even. <laughs> I'm just going to open this because it's getting a little steamy in here. Okay, yes, your first story. One of the most famous unsolved Christmas mysteries. Because you know, I'm all about my mysteries. Christmas mystery! Yay! And it's not gruesome. Oh, okay. So, I'm a little disappointed, but okay. Oh, well, I'll score it to number 10 then. <laughs> So everybody knows the story, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Yes. All was asleep in the house, not a sound of a mouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. The great mystery is that nobody knows who wrote it. No one's really sure. So Jesus. It, it was Done. A, <laughs> it was originally titled A Visit from St. Nicholas and was sent anonymously to the Sentinel, a newspaper in Troy, New York, and was first published on the 23rd of December, 1823. And it's just been published Nobody ever since? Nobody knows who did it. First of all, they thought that it was a professor named Clement Clark Moore. Mm. And he eventually took credit for the poem, saying that he was embarrassed by it and that it didn't sort of mesh with his other work and whatever. But what's so funny about this is his friends were like, Nah, that's not him. It doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit his persona. He could not have written it. That's you bitches. I'm <laughs> Some called Moore a sour, unsentimental individual and asserted that a visit from St. Nicholas did not fit his persona, but other historians disagree that it is him. But if it's his friends, so, though... Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know. Like, nah, nah. nah. Your friends so, know you the best, though. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence in favor. There's another guy who was Henry Livingston Jr., right. who died in 1828. They right. say that he was the one who wrote a visit from Saint Nicholas. The evidence that exists is more compelling in for his case yeah. than it is for Mr. Moore over there, whose friends threw him under the bus. <laughs> So it says, one of the most compelling pieces of evidence in favor of Livingston is that the names of Santa's last two rain years in the poem were originally Dunder and... This is going to sound funny. It's actually Dutch, but it's spelled Blixem. <laughs> Dunder and Blixem. It's B-L-I-X-E-M. So it's Blixem. <laughs> um, it only became Donder and Blitzen because of a printer's error. So many years later, Moore wrote out copies of the out of, of his poem but committed the same mistake so Moore made the same mistake right. that he called them Donda and Blitzen but if he'd originally known had written it he would have known that, that it was, was Donda and Blitzen which is obviously um, the Dutch for thunder and lightning and it was said that Moore didn't speak Dutch but Livingston did so it's Livingston it's Livingston I presume so it's still a bit of a mystery we have a better idea of who wrote it mm. but mm. yeah I just loved it how Moore's friends were like nah I couldn't be him nah wasn't <laughs> him man yeah I see I can see you bitches doing that to me <laughs> <laughs> guys look at this great tweet I wrote that wasn't her no it wasn't her that wasn't her guys no. that wasn't her. <laughs> Right, so my story, I don't need my phone or anything because this okay, is a real cool. life. What is that? Like, it's creepy. It's really what creepy. Is it is something that they've spoken about on like Philip DeFranco and I think even Shane Dawson did a thing about it. Yeah. Um, but basically, this whole thing about your phone listening to you. Oh, I've heard about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so the first time it happened, my bestie and I, who's currently waiting for us, that's why we're like, we gotta get, we gotta get this done. And we so, have, we have special guests today. Ah, so, 
<laughs> Let's wrap it up. <laughs> so my best friend and I, we were bitching about our phones. I had my yeah. phone in my hand, she had hers in hers, and I was bitching about my phone. And like how it just suddenly, I've only had it for a year and it's like hucking and, and basically I'll start typing and it'll just freeze and it'll yeah. just carry on with the word. Like I just have to wait and then it'll just finish the oh, sentence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's stuff like that. And there's just all these little things that just, it's just not working properly. The very next day, I get an email from Take A Lot, who I've never ordered from. I'm not subscribed from. I've, I've been on their website, but I've never like ordered or yeah. anything. They're like, need a new phone? Question mark. The next day, I was like, what? I got chills. Then this week, this week, my friend and I happened to be talking about how her mom got a perm when she was like a year, two years. And then there was an outbreak of lice. So her mom had to cut the perm off. Right. Okay. Because obviously with the perm and the lice, they didn't have a comb yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm getting all these ads, these little Facebook pop-up ads for a comb that gets rid of lice and the ads have these animated children and their hair is like made in such a way that it looks like a louse is coming out of it oh my god i've never searched for lice i've never spoken about lice until this week and i'm just I'm, I've, I've gotten to the point now with these lice ads where i'm going this is not relevant this is spam this is inappropriate <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, so they that's are life. listening. They are listening, guys. They are always, always listening. I don't know what they're gonna do with your life's information, but I, I they're listening to I it. Don't know. So. Well, now they know that I don't want it. So yeah, but it makes me question like every other ad I've seen. Because every time I've been like engaged on Facebook, then all the Facebook ads would be about like wedding planning and dresses and uh, <laughs> and all of that stuff. And my friend who recently got married, yeah, she had yeah. all of that. Yeah. And our friend Big Daddy, because he says that he's the father of uh, the friend that's who's waiting for us, he gets a lot of ads for single dads. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shall we tell them the big news or do you want to play the sweet game first? Let's do... Shall we do both? Shall we try the sweet? Yeah. Okay. So these sweets were given to me. They're panda shaped sweets and they're all the way from Amsterdam. Yeah, it's a uh, Tapsi Frucht. Lachritz in, in Frisk, <laughs> combination of fruit, something about a combination of fruit and gummies. Wow, your Dutch is so good. And uh, a little bit of uh, a smagen of citron. <laughs> so what I really like about them is that they're uh, vegetarian. That's what that means. Yay. They're vegetarian. And a friend of mine gave me because they're panda sweets and I haven't eaten them. But <laughs> we're going to try them now. Because in Tam's, on Tam's channel, we do sweet taste tests. Yeah, we've done, what, we did sour tasting. Mm, yes. Yeah. And then you did the Korean sweets. I did the Korean sweets. Right. I can link those below if you guys are... Do it, girl. Okay. Oh, wow, they're much bigger than I thought they were going to yeah. be. Yeah. Right. These so are really big. They look like little pandas. Look, I'm a panda now. Ah, I've always been a panda, but... Yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. And... Let's go. Oh my god, it's licorice. Mmm. 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 The ears are licorice. Well, for me, the face is licorice. Mmm. Mmm. So thank you to my friend Robin for these. These are delicious. These are really good. Okay, but I'm not going to talk with my mouth full because this is really important. Mmm. But this is our last episode of What the Fluff. For the foreseeable future. Yes, it was going to be our last episode for 2017. Um, we were just going to take a break over the season and then come back. But I'm moving to South Korea on Friday. Ah! Okay, well, I would when this comes out, I will you be will, in. <laughs> she will be in South Korea. I'll be in Seoul in out. South Korea. But yeah, I'm I'm moving there for work, and I'm super excited and really nervous. And okay. Hi Gareth, she's coming to you! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's the end of What The Fluff. We're going to try and change the format, we're going to figure it out. Mm. First I need to get there, figure my life out, figure the Wi-Fi password, Settle and then down. from there, you can't stop us. 
Because yeah. we're going to so get... So we're going to see if we can bring it to you in a more creative format. Yeah. I mean, we've had the, the sitting in an actual studio. We've yep. done it in a car. Let's yep. do it cross-continental, baby. <laughs> yeah, bitch. You can't keep us down because we are the What The Fluff Show. So like, subscribe, follow us on all the social medias. All down below. Our social media and everything outside of What The Fluff is down there as well. Yes. I'll link those tasting videos for you guys if yes. you want to see us cringing to sour sweets. That's it's, That hilarious. sour one is so funny. Cool. So we didn't tell you where we are. Yes, where are we? We are at the Green Belt in Constantia. It's the last little piece of green that we're going to feature in this series. People bring their dogs. Uh, Tam is obviously going to be having her phone filming everything because she's lowered to them than I am. <laughs> But yeah, we have you're probably gonna have your hands full with a dog. No, well, they walk by themselves. I do. They? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we brought my dogs, which is the special guest. You guys are gonna get to see my doggos, which is really exciting. And yeah, we're at the Green Belt. We're in Constantia. It's really great. People, there's a lot of white people here, but it's fun. They travel in herds. They are running. <laughs> they run in herds. I don't know what they're practicing for. But anyways. <sighs> Yeah, that's this is it. So that's it. That's it, guys. We wish you a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. I'm just going to eat my feelings while you... Or whatever you celebrate. If you don't, then just take advantage of the specials that are going to be coming after Christmas and all the delicious food. And it's been so much fun. It's been so great. This is not the end. Uh, and we will see you guys as soon as possible. So thanks so much for being with us on this weird and crazy journey and we hope to make it international very very soon so thanks so much for joining us today we hope you enjoyed it like comment subscribe all that good stuff and let's go walk some doggos Yay! Bye. Oh, you filthy. Look at you. <laughs> You're nasty. <laughs> <laughs>